If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question on your own before listening on. For part A of the question, in order to calculate the work done during the cycle, what we have to do is find the area underneath the graph. Remember that for a pressure volume graph, the work is going to equal the area underneath the curve. Now, hopefully we can see that during the process from A to B to C to D and then back to A, that the shape that's sort of created is a rectangle. And so it becomes our goal to find the area of this rectangle and that's going to give us the work. Now, the area of a rectangle, of course, is length times width. We can see that the length of the rectangle would be this dimension right here. And so in order to find that, we just have to note that this volume right here is V and this volume right here is V naught. That means that the length of our rectangle becomes V minus V naught. And then we have the width of the rectangle, which would be this dimension right here. Hopefully we can see along the graph that we have a pressure P naught and then a pressure over here of P. And so the width of the rectangle will become P minus P naught. Now the question notes that V is equal to 2V naught. So we can actually substitute that in for V. And then also P is given to us as being two times P naught. So we can make that substitution as well. If we simplify, we can see that the work becomes simply V naught times P naught. And then we can just plug in the given values. And when we simplify that, we get approximately 2.27 kilojoules. So this would be the correct answer to part A of the question. Now on to part B, which asks us to calculate the energy added as heat during stroke ABC. So stroke ABC would be from here to here, and then here to here. Now what we want to notice for the path A to B is that the volume isn't changing. As we move vertically up the pressure axis, the volume isn't changing. And so the heat added becomes equal to the number of moles times the, the molar specific heat at constant volume times the temperature change, which of course could be signified by Tf minus Ti. Or if we wish, we can actually change the final temperature to Tb and the initial temperature to Ta. Now, moving from B to C, we can see that in this case, it is the pressure that's remaining constant, but the volume is actually increasing. And in this case, the heat added will equal the number of moles times the molar specific heat at constant pressure, and then times the temperature change, which we can represent as Tc minus Tb, or final temperature minus initial temperature. Now the total heat, of course, would simply be the sum of these two heats. Now from an earlier chapter, we know that this term C sub V can be replaced with 3 halves times R, the ideal gas constant. And similarly, Cp can be replaced with 5 halves times the ideal co gas constant. Now what we're going to do is actually take this term right here, this Tb minus Ta, and we're basically going to factor out a T sub A from that term. Now if we factored out a T sub A, then we would be left with Tb over Ta minus 1. Just pause here and make sure that makes sense to you. One way of thinking about that is if you were to redistribute the Ta into the parentheses, you would end up with Tb minus Ta. So just make sure that makes sense to you by distributing Ta. We're also going to factor out a Ta from this term right here. Now if we did that, we would be left with T sub C over Ta minus T sub B over Ta. Again, pause the video, redistribute Ta just to make sure that you can see that that indeed is equal to Tc minus Tb. Now we will notice that this term right here has an N an R and a TA, and then this term right here also has an N, an R, and a TA, so we're going to factor that out. Now let's notice that this term right here we know is equal to pressure times volume. And to understand that, just think back to the ideal gas law. We know pressure times volume is equal to N times R times temperature. Now the fact that we have a subscript of A next to temperature means that we have to go back to the point marked A and notice that the pressure and volume there are P naught and V naught. That means that we would have to add 
a subscript of naught to both the pressure and the volume. So in other words, we can replace NRTA with P naught V naught. Next, we're going to try to convince ourselves that this term, this TB over TA, is actually equal to 2. And so that's going to apply for this TB over TA and also this TB over TA. But of course, we want to try to prove that to ourselves. So go back to the graph and look at the process from A to B. Remember, at A, the pressure is P naught. At B, the pressure is 2 P naught. And so what has happened is that we have doubled the pressure. Now, when we double the pressure at constant volume, and notice the volume is indeed constant as we're moving from A to B. So when we double the pressure at constant volume, that means that the temperature also will double because pressure and temperature are proportional to one another. So that means that the temperature at point B is double the temperature at point A. In other words, the temperature at B, TB, is equal to 2 times TA. So if we plugged in for TB right here, if we plugged in 2 times TA, then that TA would cancel with that TA, leaving us with just 2. So hopefully that proves to us that that ratio, TB over TA, is equal to 2. And then this ratio right here, we're going to try to convince ourselves it's actually equal to 4. And to understand that, remember that going from A to B, we have doubled the pressure. And from B to C, we have doubled the volume. So if the pressure is doubled and the volume is doubled, then we could look at PV equals NRT. And we can see that if we double the pressure and double the volume, that we're actually going to multiply the temperature by 4. That means that the temperature at position C is 4 times the temperature at position A. And that is going to make this ratio of TC over TA equal to 4. So with those substitutions, we can simplify this equation. So we've made the substitutions. When we clean up what's inside the brackets, we should get 13 halves P naught V naught. And then at this point, we could substitute in the values of P naught and V naught. And when we crunch that down, we should get approximately 14.8 kilojoules. So this would be the correct answer to part B of the question. And then to part C, that's going to be relatively straightforward because we just have to take the work and divide it by the magnitude of the heat added. We figured out the work in part A as well as the heat added in part B. And we get roughly 0.154, which is going to be 15.4%. So that would be the correct answer to part C. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, click the thumbs up icon and subscribe. Remember, send in your own question to this email address and I'll do my absolute best to post an answer to it on YouTube.